All right. If you're not here, raise your hand. And now it's time to roll into our final session. And so uh, first talk, I'll introduce a uh, man who has an entire website dedicated to the pronunciation of his last name. And so I will only introduce him by first name. Uh, so Min, you're up. All right. Awesome. I'm going to share my screen now. There we go. Um, hi. Uh, so yeah, I'm Ming Nguyen, uh, calling in from San Jose, and I'm going to be your therapist for the next five minutes. So you have a problem. You have too many tabs open. At the last Mapping USA, a little more than a year ago, I left you with one phrase I hear a lot as a software developer, yak shaving. It's a perfect phrase for that feeling when all you wanted to do was fix one little thing, and then it balloons into a gazillion things to follow up on. This is a screenshot of all the mapping-related tabs I had open in Firefox about a year ago. I'm guessing many of you have similar screenshots to share. Uh, at the time, I was unemployed with quite a bit of time on my hands. Uh, but even so, this was madness. There was no way I was going to get back to all those old to-do items before even more of them went up on my plate. Sometimes it just feels like it's all up to you to get it done just right. It's overwhelming. And then a, a troublemaker like me comes along and says, hey, wouldn't it be great if you also contribute to all these other related projects so they can all jive together? A lot of the times when I try to introduce someone to an open data or free content project, the reaction I get is, yay, I love the idea. I want to help. I really do. But my time is precious, and I don't have any time to spare for your pet project. But I want people to understand that it isn't just a zero-sum game. These extra projects don't just keep you busy. They also give you some time back. How? Well, it all depends on how you approach these projects. So I want you to come away from our therapy session today with one phrase. Delegate. That's right, you're in charge and you get to decide what to, you know, to spend time on what you care about most. So let me explain with an anecdote. I live in a city that's huge and not very walkable. So I often survey the city for OSM by driving around. Originally, every time I hit a red light, I jot something down on a notepad. I hope for red lights. I became a very bad driver. Uh, eventually I upgraded to voice dictation on my phone, but I still didn't keep my eyes on, eyes on the road very much as you see here. And well, now I have a backlog of over 100 hours of unmapped voice recordings, yay. So the solution was to replace my on-spot on note-taking with something less involved, so settling my, uh, setting my phone on the dash and recording a stream of photos from Appleary. Um, I could pick apart these photos back home at my own pace, but not only that, others could too. So while I still have that backlog of photos, I'm no longer hoarding that backlog for myself. Now I can go out surveying some more without fearing that I'll drown in notes, and others around me have fodder for their own contributions. This is just one example of how offloading some of your responsibilities onto a crowdsource project can grow the projects you care about without it becoming a burden. Here's a product that opened in my neighborhood recently. It has a lot of history, and they've taken care to explain that history in commemorative plaques throughout the park. Short story here is that there used to be a Chinatown here. Uh, it was San Jose's second Chinatown. After the city conspired with arsonists to burn down the first one, a German immigrant named John Heinlein welcomed the suddenly homeless Chinese community onto his land to start a new neighborhood. It thrived for decades. A neighbor of mine beat me to mapping Heinleinville Park in OSM and did a fantastic job using some nifty LiDAR technology. But even micromapping each of the trees and each of the picnic tables in OSM wouldn't do justice to this place. The park only really makes sense if you read up on its history, but this is research at the desk that doesn't really belong in OSM. We need to put OSM's coverage of the present in context, but that context, context needs to go somewhere else. Enter Wikidata. Most of you know of Wikidata as the source of those bizarre Q code tags that pervade OSM. Uh, there's a forum post about that these, uh, today, uh, but it's really the, most ambitious, uh, the world's most ambitious knowledge base. Um, you can use it to take notes about fa the facts that you learn as you stumble upon documents like the one you just saw. And you can leave a link to the source, essentially a bookmark, but much more organized than your browser's overflowing reading list. Then you or someone else can take those facts and massage them into a narrative on Wikipedia or a similar site like uh, A.A. Rhodes. It's hard to write good encyclopedic content, but it's a lot easier when you have an outline of the facts and the sources on Wikidata. And all those sources on Wikidata really come in handy. And then the piece de resistance, you or someone else can apply conventional OSM skills to the facts you've gathered in order to map the same thing in an open historical map. Here you see all the overlapping layers of history, not just the park and the apartment complex that exists today, but also the Brownfield, the Corporation Yard in Heinlandville that preceded. Now, someone can really learn about the inspiring story of this place. 
So here's my recipe for cooking up a mean uh, open knowledge gumbo. As a native New Orleanian, I know that you can't cook a good gumbo out of order. You have to spend time on that roux, those savory facts and sources. The patience is worth it when you share that uh, nine hogsheads worth of open, hearty open knowledge. And if you leave little breadcrumbs for others to assist you, you can finally reach tab bar zero. Thank you. All right, men, thanks for that. Uh, fascinating as always.